<laughs> wait, wait one second. I gotta, I gotta take this phone call. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, General Hux. Yes. No, sir. I want you for the First Order Army. Only you can prevent planet-wide forest fires. <laughs> Pointy fingers are fun. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm going to take a look at the Bandai SH Figure Arts First Order Stormtrooper. The First Order Stormtrooper isn't the one I was most excited about. I mean, Figure Arts has shown some exciting stuff from the original trilogy, from the prequels. So, getting this right in the midst of getting uh, the Black Series one, the model kit one, uh, Mafex just uh, solicited theirs. Yeah, this seems like more of the same. I would like other figures, but it's understandable. It's right in the middle of the movie hype, but at the same time, with all this hype going on, I've become kind of a trooper junkie. I have to try every different version. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm looking for the best one, because even the ones I don't like, they go on the shelf. And I say don't like, but, you know, like less, I guess. I have my favorites, but I haven't opened this one yet, so I don't know if it's my favorite yet or not. Now, looking at the package, there is some changes from what we've seen in the past Star Wars figure arts packaging. They've changed this to a copper, whereas I think, at least so far, they've all been silver. So the copper is kind of a different, it, it's kind of cool, I like it. And then you have the logo for The Force Awakens, pretty pictures, action poses on the back, bunch of stuff I can't read. It is kind of disappointing that he only comes with the blaster. There's no stock on it. There's no tonfa or baton or whatever it's called. There's no shield. So it seems kind of basic, but with the extra hands, uh, I've, I still feel like I'm getting my money's worth. Now, still in the package, I've never had a problem with paint on a figure arts figure so far, but I can kind of see on the black on his chest right here, one of the little ob rounds is missing some of the paint. Not a huge deal. It's just something that stuck out at me when I pulled it out of the shipping box. Now, I did get Kylo Ren with this, but I'm doing a team-up review with VB, so this will be a couple days from now. But for right now, I'm going to get him open, see what's going on here. And here he is out of the package. And uh, usually when I go from, you know, the packaged part of the video to the loose part of the video, I kind of mess around with the figure, take some pictures, that kind of thing. So... I can say this with a little bit of confidence. Uh, this may be my favorite First Order Stormtrooper that I have so far. The Mafex is coming uh, next year sometime. Not quite sure what's going on with it yet. But between the model kit and then the Black Series and then this one, this one is definitely uh, my favorite at this moment. All the sculpt details are there. I, they're nice and sharp. Not quite as sharp as the model kit, but... <laughs> the details there. And then being a stormtrooper, it doesn't have a lot of paint to it. It's here and there. It's got black straps on the helmet. Then, you know, the black parts here. Like I said, it's just missing just a slight tiny bit of paint right there. But otherwise, everything's nice and clean and sharp. For articulation, this is what makes it my favorite. Just everything is fluid. Everything is nice. Lots of range of movement. The neck is a ball at the top and at the bottom. So you get forward shifting and back, get side to side, get down. Not great. It's a helmet though, you know, pretty good up. You can see that it's pretty hollow up in there. The neck just rotates all the way around side, side. The shoulders are kind of a ball going into a butterfly joint. You'll have to, you'll have to excuse the thunder and rain. We're getting a flood right now. It's inside a butterfly joint. It goes forward and back up and down a little bit and then all the way around on a swivel now it does have that inside black cup thing that's supposed to come out and cover the joint whenever it's you know in a position but between this and I think it was the clone trooper they just it just doesn't work that well it doesn't come out it just kind of sits in there it, it does block from looking up in there for the most part but I don't know I feel like it's supposed to come out and cover now the shoulder pad is on a double hinge. It hinges out so you can get the arm up and then bring it down to whatever position you want. It's on a ball on the end so it does have some rotation. There's a swivel at the bicep. 
double elbows that come most of the way up. This is the best range out of the three figures we have so far. There's rotation at the forearm. It doesn't go all the way around, but it's, you know, for that subtle posing. Uh, there's a hinge and swivel at the wrist. You can set that to go up and down or side to side. Whichever way you put the hand on is how the hinge works. And then it swivels around. The torso, awesome. You have a ball joint at the top and it gets a lot of range of movement. Now, if you go too far, I've noticed this, it kind of gets stuck. You got to kind of work it around until it goes back on top. But you have forward, you have back, large gap, so you can't go too far. Side, side. But at the waist, too, there's a ball joint, so you have side, side, forward, and back, just all around. So to crunch forward, using both, he can crunch pretty far. The hips are hinge and swivel, and they also have those black cups that come down and hide the joint, kind of fill in the gap. It does work on the legs because of gravity. It's pulling down. So you get forward, and here is another awesome thing that should be integrated into all figures with belt pouches. The pouches here are on hinges, so they hinge up out of the way. That is fantastic. So you can bring the leg forward pretty much all the way. Back, the the uh, butt guard here gets in the way. Out, it kind of wanted to spring back in. Out isn't great. There's a swivel at the thigh. Double knees, they don't come all the way up. Again, that's a downfall of the armor, but it gets good enough. They have the same kind of uh, hinge and swivel at the ankle as it does at the wrist, so you get some swivel. Then you get some hinge. Not great to the back and a little bit forward. Again, because of the design, you don't get a lot of movement. This comes down and just covers the articulation. Old school uh, rocker at the ankle, so it goes side to side, and then a hinge at the toe. Going back to the sculpt for a minute, uh, he does have that Walmart slipper kind of tread on the bottom like the model kit. It's just not as pronounced. It's, it's a little bit just subdued, and it looks like it's more worn up here on the toe, almost like heavy usage. I, I kind of like that. Now for accessories, he comes with uh, two fists, and they work pretty well. It's got the black and the white. He's got two open hands for gripping the front of the weapon. You can put these left or right. He comes with two of those. Same with the trigger fingers, or the pointing fingers, but he's got right and left there, so you can have right or left-handed troopers. Now for his blaster, uh, this is the best painted blaster we've gotten so far. Uh, the silver here, the black, the whites, it's all nice and clean. It looks fantastic. But not having dug into the dictionaries or what size or, you know, a lot of pictures, I can't help but think it's a little bit large because here is the Black Series Blaster. This has some bulk to it. It's quite a bit bigger. And for some reason, this hinges down. I don't know if this is an extra handle. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I haven't seen this. Uh, I don't remember it in the movie and none of the other guns do it. But like most of the figure arts we've seen so far, the hands are a little bit scary to pop off. And this is where you can get the joint going which direction you want it to go. You pick a position, you put the hand on. If you want up and down, you put it that way. If you want it side to side, you put it that way. And the blaster, like I said, it's bulky. It almost seems a little large for the hand. You've got to kind of stretch the fingers out and get it jammed down in there. And also the trigger finger doesn't quite reach the trigger. Which, it looks okay. You pop the other hand, put an open hand in it. And out of all the troopers we do have right at the moment, it seems like this one can get into the most natural two-handed pose. And that easy. It just falls right in. A little shunt here, a little tilt there. It's just a natural personality to this figure. It just poses so nicely. The one thing that other troopers can do that this one can't is holster its blaster on the thigh here. It, the space is there, but there's no slot on the inside of the gun or any way to hang it there. But that's cool. He's going to be holding the blaster most of the time anyway. If he came with the pistol, I'd be kind of pissed that it didn't go here, but he doesn't, so this works. Here he is with the uh, Hasbro Black Series figure. And I still like the Hasbro figure, but if you look at the figure arts, it's more streamlined. It's more natural. The heights line up, 
which is good. You can add the figure arts right into your army collection, but the helmet on the figure arts is slightly smaller. More detailed, but slightly smaller. It's the same with the shoulder pads. Here he is with the uh, model kit, figure arts black series model kit. And again, this throws in another body type. Uh, the figure arts is a slimmer character, more agile. The black series is kind of your average Joe in a stormtrooper armor. And then you get to the model kit, which as everyone knows, I wasn't quite as happy with as I have been with other model kits in the past. Only because of his bulk, it, it's kind of hard to pose him around. His helmet doesn't have a lot of range, but it works out that the model kit is a bulkier guy under the armor. He's not going to move around as much. I've got him as kind of the, uh, the brawn in the display. So all three of these work out. The sheens are a little bit different armor to armor. You can tell that the Black Series is kind of darker. The figure arts pretty shiny, pretty white, and then you get to the model kit and it has the most sheen only because of the way it was molded. I like all three. So at the end of the day, I stick by my initial thoughts on this figure. Best trooper so far. We don't know how the Mafex is going to be, but right now, if I had the money, I would replace all my Black Series figures with the figure arts. I wouldn't get rid of the Black Series, they'd be in the background, kind of fill out that army look to it. But for the main troopers in the display, I, I would definitely go with figure arts. I'd like to see pauldrons, uh, different weapon types, uh, bring out the shield, a stock for the gun. I think the only downfall to this figure is the accessories. Yes, he has some cool hands, very expressive hands. But he just comes with the blaster. But the thought put into the actual figure itself, I still feel it's worth the money. Very expressive, very full of personality. You can get so many poses out of this figure. With it being a trooper on top of that, it's just fantastic. I love this thing. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the foosh. Now, here's a little tricky part. There's a cap on the end that you have to swing up and then you swing the arm out and it gets out 90 degrees. If you don't go complete 90, you can take this cap, bring it down and it kind of hides the articulation. But if you have it straight up and down and you try to extend it out, the cap catches on the bicep here. So if you extend it, it's going to pop the arm off. It's not a biggie. You just move the cap out of the way, pop the bicep back on and you're good to go again. 